You're listening to Superpower Creatives on the Superpower Up podcast. The show that sparks the superpowers of musicians and artists to ignite change. All the little men, will they get the chance to come back? Hello, this is David Del Mar, your host of Superpower Creatives, and you're listening to our episode, Quality Conscious Music Creation. I believe everyone is a creator, and it's this inherent birthright that's the source of our superpowers. Stepping into this personal authority is scary, though. This show celebrates creatives that stay true to who they really are, making a living using their creative superpowers. The stories they share will excite and inspire listeners to do the same, making positive change in the world. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our guest for today's show. His level of commitment to his craft is top, top, top level. His talents, knowledge, and commitment to song creation is, is unique to him, and the sound you hear is proof of this. He's a classically trained musician, and how James Lee Baker uses this training is by fusing influences from acoustic singer-songwriters like David Mead, Alice Paul, John Gorka, Gregory Allen Isakov, Bob Dylan, and Slade Cleaves. He embraces open tunings to create an unconventional but welcoming sound and timbre to his playing. Trained briefly by Richard Guywitz, a renowned finger-style guitar player, James Lee's finger-style guitar playing is rich and melodic, pulling listeners into memorable motifs and atmospheres. In 2017, he released a Texas-inspired full-length project called Home Again, harnessing his experience in technology. He recruited talented studio session musicians, accessing performers from Los Angeles to Canada to the United Kingdom and Denver. Home Again is a country-flavored Americana album, rich with instrumentation like the use of the dobro, the lap steel, the fiddle, and the harmonica. That's cool. <laughs> uh, his current single, Disappear for the Weekend, is receiving airplay and charting on the New Music Weekly and Airplay Today country charts. The same is also true for his previous single, Cowtown Blues. In March 2018, he released an EP of folk Americana songs called The Canadian River. The single of the same title placed number 23 on the folk DJ radio charts in April of 2018, and the song Two Cages Birds went on to be selected for the John O'Hara Songwriting Performance Grant. James has played at several prominent venues, including the Whiskey A Go Go in Los Angeles, the Fox Theater in Boulder and Swallow Hill, and the Walnut Room in Denver. James Lee, hello. Such cool words to describe your sound. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks, David. It's great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, of course. You're very welcome. Uh, well, I'm going to also just uh, thank you for, uh, you know, taking something you were gifted in and creating music, in turn, gifting everyone who has the joy to listen to your art and song craft. That is really what it's all about. And today we're talking about our episode our show is quality conscious music creation, and more specifically, how James Lee experiences creativity that develops the sound he hears in his mind and what performing his songs is like compared to recording the songs. So James Lee, how we open up our show is the same question for everybody. What is your creative superpower? Huh. Well, uh, I, I learned my creative superpower from my mentor. Uh, one of my mentors, his name's Ellis Paul. Um, and that is um, trying to write a vivid story. I, I think from learning from him, I, I've learned to um, to paint a crisp story that allows the listener to get pulled into the narrative. Oh. Um, but I've made that superpower my own when I realized what I wanted to talk about. Mm. And um, and I think that's something that's more unique uh, in, in that the things that I find most relevant and most important for writing is really talking about the things that people aren't talking about, like... Uh, how humanity's relationship with religion has changed or how we, we grow older and become old world men. Um, these are the sort of soft topics that I want to talk about in my songwriting. And uh, I find that to be a, a fountain of opportunity. Well, I find that so fascinating. I mean, what to write about it. I mean, that, uh, you know, that's the proverbial muse thing. And, those soft topics, what is it like to, to create your song around something that isn't necessarily what 
gets heard about a lot, but should probably be heard about more. What's the song creation pro- uh, process like for you when you're kind of bridging, you know, those two sort of uh, the way the world is and, you know, the way the world would be better understanding the way it is. How is it that you enjoy bridging those two through your songwriting? Well, it's sort of like method acting. Um, mm. You you become the character, whether it, you're talking about something in your life um, or talking about what other people are going through. Um, and I think it requires a lot of empathy and a lot of, um, it requires patience. It requires um, taking the time to understand what other people are going through. And, you know, in some ways, imagining yourself in that situation, that for me is where the creativity comes from. I wrote a song that hasn't been released yet called The Last Cowboy in Hutchinson County. Uh, I'll be releasing that this year. And it's a story about a, a cowboy and his son who is a CNC machinist and how the world around them is changing and how the cowboy is is becoming a, a dying breed. And I, in order for me to really write that story in a way that was convincing, I had to imagine myself as being a cowboy and yeah. walk myself through it and ask all these questions like, what would I be feeling and what kind of problems would I be having? And so I think that that is the fuel for the, the beginning of the creative process for me for songs. I find that so fascinating because I mean, to me, what I hear is that's the ultimate, that's really the ultimate creativity channel to be able to, you know, to paint this crisp picture through your songs. But by doing so, it's like, like you mentioned method acting, you're putting yourself into that, mental scene and, and walking like physically though it's in your mind walking through with that uh, what that character would would possibly be going through how in your life experience do you find that interjects its way into the scene that you're walking into within that, that creative mental space that you use to to produce your songs um well i i think that um I'm sorry, could you refine? Yeah, yeah, let me, yeah. So like your your experiences in life, do they find their way into that process? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Um, maybe not as uh, as whole truths, but portions of truth. Um, there's this, <laughs> another song I've written recently called Returning to Paris. Um, that'll be really like that. cool. And it, the song is, is, is about a, a couple who's been married for 10 years, and they made a promise when they got engaged in Paris that if the relationship didn't work out, they would come back to Paris and break up in a mutual way. And so it's, it's sort of a twist on Paris. And I, I kind of turn it on its head because normally it's a song, it's a place about love. And so, uh, you know, uh, in that story, there's, there's elements of the song where, um, you know, I'm talking about things like laying on the grass on the Champ de Mars at night underneath the Eiffel tower and, walking the bridges across the Sin River and all of that stuff my wife and I did on vacation a few years ago. Granted, my wife and I are still together, so there's <laughs> there's not any truth in there, but yeah. I use that, that those elements to paint a, a realistic picture and to talk about those those landmarks and things like that. And the same thing would disappear for the weekend. I lived in California for three years, and one of our favorite things to do is to get out for the weekend and go to Napa or go to Monterey or some Santa Cruz or something like that. Yeah. And so the song talks about elements about driving down highway one and things like that. And that, that again, that's just me gleaning from my experiences in life. So, yeah, I think, I think life is sort of this like field trip, a constant field trip. And if you've got your eyes open, you can see things that you can use. Well, I mean, that, I mean, everyone has their 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 own song process of their own you know song craft process, but that what you described sounds like a a really fun one. <laughs> I just uh, think that's probably got to be a fun thing to to write um, in that sort of uh, in that sort of style. Um, well, this is definitely very awesome, and I I want to I want to hear a little bit more about that. But uh, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and we're going to just we're going to just kind of stay with James Lee and hear, hear a little bit about um, how he got started in music and just a little bit of that backstory. But before we jump into a break, let's tell people where they can go to find out more about you. Yeah, so uh, anywhere where you can stream music, you'll find my music and uh, also available for for purchase as well. Um, And I have a website, uh, jamesleebaker.com. And of course, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, That's primarily my social media focus. I have a Twitter account, but 
I don't really use it as much as, as others do. So. Yeah, t Twitter and acquired taste. Um, <laughs> yeah. right, well, it's very cool. Um, all right, so we've been talking with James Lee Baker today about our episode, Quality Conscious Music Creation. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to stay with James Lee and learn from him what it takes to uh, make it in the music industry and to get your music out there. But we're going to first hear how it all started for him when we get back. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer -peer learning, intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. We're back. You're listening to Superpower Creatives, and today we're talking with James Lee Baker on our episode, Quality Conscious Music Creation. So, James Lee, I'd like to jump back in around where we left off before the break, and uh, I want to hear how you got started in music. What was the thing that, uh, you know, got that spark going for you? Well, I grew up in music. Uh, my family was musical. Every member of my family, in some degree, had some musical talent, um, but I, primarily church. You know, I, I grew up in, an, in a church that was musical, and so I was part of that process. Um, and then, you know, my father was a drummer, my brother was a tuba player, and so, and I was a vocalist. Um, so I went to college for vocal performance for a couple of years before they were unable to offer the remaining classes on my degree. And around that time, I met who would later be my wife. And so I sort of moved into IT um, and, uh, but never really gave up on the songwriting process. I started playing acoustic guitar when I was 16 and started writing songs shortly after and then uh, and just continued to work on that process in my 20s. It wasn't until um, my early 30s that I started taking it more seriously. I started mentoring with um, with prominent folk artists and um, vocal vocal coaches and, and, and songwriting coaches and even like critique communities like Nashville Songwriters Association who would you know help you write a better song through the editing process so over the last few years i've been working on refining that and i'm starting to gain some traction so that's kind of my my music history in a nutshell yeah well surmised and i mean obviously to hear sort of that 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 um that good summation of it but also how we open up the show with you know everyone here and what you've already achieved and uh you know in that in, in your career so far, it's very, it's, it's cool to sort of get that quick uh, uh, mental timeline of it. Let me ask you this, James Lee, why do you do what you do with your superpowers? You know, I've asked that question myself, you know, the creative process um, is really important to me and I, I've wanted to understand why. Uh, the, I guess the more I reflect, it's a combination of two things. First, it's that, um, that I believe it's an avenue. Uh, it's a way I s distill from the world uh, artwork. And, and I look at the world and I'm out in the world and I have these ideas or inspiration that come to me. Uh, I have an ability that maybe other people don't do because they haven't, say they haven't worked on it for years, is, is turning that into something beautiful, something, something new, something fresh. And, and allowing people to experience it. Music is sort of like a gateway drug for stories in life. And for people who, even for people who are not really readers or avid, you know, listeners of stories, um, a song is, is an easy gateway for, for them to, to get latched into the story. So, so I, find, I find there's an opportunity there. The second aspect of it, which I think is more important, is that all of us are creating something, whether we whether we're a musician, whether we're cooking dinner, whether we're making children, um, human beings in general have been, nature really in general has been given the gift to create. And I think that we are all creationists. We just, 
we just don't see it. And so I, I see that in everyone in the world. And this just happens to be the thing that I like to create. What, with that perspective, how have you enjoyed an experience with a fan who has come to you and shared something about your music and how it's somehow impacted their life in a, in a very meaningful way? Oh, well, that's, yeah, I met, I met a friend, um, well, I met a, a fan, it was at the Tumbleweed Folk Festival in, oh, that's cool place. Uh, in Kansas, and uh, I did a set there, and she happened to be in the audience. One of the songs, again, that I haven't released yet is Returning to Paris. And so I played that there. And, you know, when I was working with Ellis Paul, one of the things that he taught me was to, um, to paint a story in such a way that pulls the listener into the snow globe of the story. So they oh, like awesome. they're part of the story. And he would say that all the time. And then I got done with this, the, the, uh, the festival and I'm, I got to meet her and she told me how much she liked the song. And Later, I went on to, to Facebook to see that I had been mentioned in a post. And I think her words were some, something along the lines of, I felt like I was in Paris with him. You know, so not only do I see the teachings working, um, but it is affecting people. There are people that come to me and say, uh, you know, that song literally put me in tears because my, my fiance and I uh, went to Paris when we got engaged. So... You know, it just depends. Uh, it depends on who, the song. Sometimes I hit the nail on the head. You know, the story really matches somebody's personal experience and they come to me and let me know that. And that's that's very empowering and, and it's, it's inspiring. Well, with that said, when you're performing and you you find a connection with one or, or two people. I mean, obviously you perform it for the whole audience, but you know, you find the connection with one or two uh, members of the audience. What does that do for you as a performer in terms of how you are, you know, engaged in, in the moment of, of performing your, your art? What's that like for you? Um, I, I think it's symbiotic, you know, uh, I'm giving them something that, that they that, that they paid for um yeah, they, absolutely. and they're giving me something that i have been working hard to earn and so uh, there's a symbiosis there uh i think we're helping each other out um and uh oh, that, that's probably the best way to put it yeah it's kind of like uh everybody gets uh everybody gets a, a reward for for showing up <laughs> yeah yeah, I love that. Um, well, let me ask you this: what What are some milestones or, or challenges uh, in your in your that you've had in your career that you've experienced that have uh, dictated one way or another direction for your life or, or your your music or or your your music business? What's something you can share that uh, is kind of something really pops up in your head? Well, I came into my I guess the beginning the beginnings of my professional career uh, at a time where you, the CD sales were non-existent, even right. digital music sales have declined dramatically and sort of came into the industry professionally around the YouTube era. And so one of the biggest challenges that I have is staying true to myself as an artist and still trying to get exposure. I know a lot of friends of mine who I applaud them for what they've done. Um, I don't. I, I, I personally wouldn't do it, but those those individuals are doing you know top forty uh, cover videos on YouTube and uh, letting their music sort of take kind of a back seat to build the following. So for years they're sort of just doing whatever comes out on the radio, even though they may not be necessarily pop artists. And so I don't know that I find myself doing that. And so when I don't do something like that, then I'm left with being genuine and still trying to get exposure and exposure in today's music scene is really difficult because it's really easy for someone to become a musician and put out a product. Um, and so there's a lot of white noise. There's a lot of chatter and it's hard to stand out among the chatter. So that's been probably my greatest challenge is, is exposure. And then secondly, because there isn't digital music or CD sales anymore. The largest stream of revenue is performances and, and um, maybe content, uh, Kickstarters and Patreon and things like that. And I've never been a big fan of like get, trying to just get people to like me to make money. Like I don't, it, it, I think 
I think it's very toxic and ego driven. And ultimately it drives us, it can drive us in a state of depression and anxiety when we're not successful. So I've never wanted to frame it around like, oh man, I need to build my social media following and I need to take pictures of this dish that I'm eating so that I <laughs> like me. Like, I don't, I, I don't like that at all. Yeah, I, I don't it takes away from the genuine nature of the work and it makes the songwriting toxic for me. And so, yeah, it does. so for me, I want that exposure to be genuine and I want to be, I want to create positive relationships with people. And, uh, and ultimately until I do that, I'm going to continue to take a loss financially every year. So I've tried to frame it differently. I think I like to look at the music as my gift to the world. If at some point in time I make a living off of it, that would be great. But ultimately, as songwriters, we even artists, we create art. And you know, if you if you put if you put all your paintings in a room uh, and no one sees them, what's the point? You know, I think I think ultimately this is art is is an altruistic effort, and that's the way I choose to look at it. Well, that said, what 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 are your thoughts about like film and TV placements and and getting your film into that uh, into that avenue of uh, of outreach and revenue stream? Um, that that is something that's definitely on my purview, especially since I have a family. Um, I'm not really um, interested in to, uh, doing 150 shows a year and touring all over the country constantly. Yeah, I'm more interested in something like licensing, and so that's something that's heavily in my focus in the latter half of 2019. I'm going to start doing that, but that in and of itself is really a part-time job because yeah. you've got to create relationships with music supervisors. You've got to go to film festivals. You've got to be sending out emails. You've got to be proactively searching out opportunities on a daily basis. Uh, so there's a lot of administrative work involved with that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm prepared to do that. I may actually even just hire somebody to do that with me. Yeah. Uh, so that's long term because that gives me the ability to possibly make royalties off of my music and at the same time uh, not have to tour as much. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. And uh, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's like as the CD sales and all that kind of goes away and it's all about streaming. There's, you know, so much more production going on as far as like, you know, uh, movie and show creation. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you can kind of like find a, uh, a system that works with that it can be um yeah it can be a good thing for sure with the, the film and tv placement um what is it that you have obviously you've, you've mentioned um returning to paris you know that's a a, a song project that that's going to be released soon what are some other things that uh, that you have in the works or that you're kind of you know thinking of uh in your mind to maybe get going that you'd, you'd be willing to share that that we could hear about yeah. Uh, so I've got four acoustic music videos that are going to be released in the next few months. Um, those are recorded at the Rialto Theater in Loveland, Colorado. They're sort of a raw, unplugged, intimate sound. Nice. We, we use like a nice acoustic omnidirectional microphone from Ear Trumpet Labs. And so it's it's sort of this unplugged acoustic sound. And then, so I'll be releasing those. Uh, I'm, I went into the studio um, in February, I'm sorry, in January to do recordings at Blue Rock Studios in Austin with producer Chris Bell and several renowned musicians um, like Roscoe Beck and Doug Pettibone, who've worked with artists like Leonard Cohen and John Mayer. And so I'm working on creating some high quality content. And my goal is to put out an LP, a 10, 10 to 12 song album in the next, I'd say, six to nine months. Um, so that'll be coming out. I'll likely be releasing some singles uh, in the summertime. I've got one more single left on the uh, on the Home Again album that we're going to be putting out. And then after that, I'll be shifting my focus to these new singles. So um, the remaining time I'm going to be spending, uh, you know, doing co-writes and finishing the album's writing process. And then I'll be going back into the studio probably sometime in the in the early summer to to get this this album wrapped up. Oh, I love it. I mean, and as you were describing that, just like I got this intuitive hit, like like this guy's gonna like this guy's you know call it like not like like get a breakthrough, but like breakthrough. I, I just kind of got this intuitive hit, like like this guy's gonna like 
like it, something's going to pull them through to to that other side. And I just wanted to make sure I shared that because I would be unauthentic if I didn't. Um, but let me let me ask you this: what um, what's it like to balance life with you know having an, an IT job and and obviously being a, a prolific songwriter and, and and performer? What's it like to to balance those two <laughs> those two worlds? Well, I appreciate your kind words. That, that means a yeah, lot to me. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I for the longest time, I I would I, I had this frame of mind. I think so many of us do. Where until I quit my job and make the music my full time job, it isn't really a thing. And even the IRS feels this way. If I'm not making, <laughs> if I'm not making money in my music and I'm using it to soften the blow of my personal taxes, which wasn't my intention, I yeah. could get I could get audited because they consider it yep. a hobby. A and hobby, so, yep. yeah. So, so the world sort of sees it that way, and I choose to see it differently. I think that we have evolved in the music industry, and it's time for us to adapt. And I know songwriters who are 10 times more successful than me, and they're, they're spending half of their time going to school to become a software engineer. And so... <laughs> I think, Sorry, I think that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's it's frustrating, uh, but it's it is the way we live now. And so I I think I think flipping it on its head and seeing a different perspective is I've worked really hard to build my career in technology, yeah. and it's done really well. And it is now a fuel source for my music that gives me the ability to do things that other people can't do without a full time job. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, that's got to be a rewarding feeling. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. I mean, it, it's, it, it's, yeah, it is. And I think that I, I don't, th I don't think I have to stop doing one or the other. I, I think mm -hmm. I could be working full time remotely for a tech company and even be touring on the road in the evenings. You know, it's totally possible for me to maintain both, at least until the music reaches some semblance of, uh, uh, you know, of, of profit. You know, I, I think it's reasonable to to say I'd quit my job for 75 to hundred grand a year. Um, but that's a, that would obviously have to incorporate all of my traveling costs and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seriously, I, I don't, I, I'm going to try and be creative for the next few years and, and dangle both. That's one of the reasons why my, my wife and I are talking about moving to Austin because hmm. I have, I have a, a dense proximity of things that I can do as a musician uh, without leaving Texas very much. So I can, I can just spend, I can spend 60, 70% of my time just doing things in Texas, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Well, and it just, uh, yeah, it just seems like a, a natural progression for just like where you're at with your career and, and that you're a specialist in your IT, which I mean, th those, the, the, the need for that is just growing by day, uh, which is, you know, part of the whole technology, <laughs> uh, digital world that uh, we find ourselves in for sure. Um, but let me ask you this. What, how, what are your thoughts on like virtual concerts and like concert window doing things online, those kind of concerts? Uh, have you done anything wh with that sort of stuff? I haven't yet, but as I'm starting to build a social media following, that's starting to become more of, a, of, a, of a, an area of focus. So uh, I think it's time for me to start experimenting with that in the next few months and just seeing how it pans out. Cause I think it, I definitely could think I could see 10, 15 people at least jumping in and listening, which, which is enough to get the ball rolling. It, it is sure. And well, let me ask you this too, kind of on, on that topic. Uh, you know, you've heard the expression and you don't need a billion fans. You just need like 10, you need just need like thousand loyal fans. Uh, wh what is your thought about, um, you know, the, the thousand loyal fans and having like that niche niche, market of you know true fans um and that's maybe maybe that funnels into you know your social media uh progression that you're in right now but what are your what are your thoughts about that you know having a thousand fans and you know they'll they'll support your career for you know for as long as you choose to to have a career in music um i think that's really good advice you know um one of the things I ran into is that there was this company or website that allows you to, if you, for how, forever, for how many ever people you follow on Twitter, those, they will find people to follow you back. I thought that, that was an interesting approach. So I started loading up on followers and I, of course I got people following me on Twitter, but none of them were engaging with my material at all. And so I realized that that was sort of um, superfluous. And so 
uh, the, I, you know, the, I get a lot of people now, you know, I probably have anywhere from a thousand to 1500 people follow me on, on every platform and continuing to grow that. Um, but again, Facebook, I have low engagement, even though those individuals liked me organically, I'm finding that it's a big experiment, um, particularly <laughs> like sites like Instagram. What I'm finding is that, you know, I'm using tools that allow me to go out and automate, automate the things that I like based on yeah. the things I'm interested in. And that is resulting in a lot of genuine uh, organic uh, follows uh, that people are actually engaging in my content. So it's, it's a constant experiment of trying to, to build a fan base. But I think ultimately you're right. Like, you know, uh, if, if there's people that think I'm a 6 out of 10. There are other people who think I'm a 10 out of 10. Yeah. There's some people that think I'm a two out of 10. I, I've had anonymous feedback from songwriting critique saying, I wish this guy, this guy's voice wasn't in such a crappy song. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so some people, some people just don't, don't like me. And, I, and I'm fine with that. That's the way it is. But you're right. Yeah. You're not a 10 people that go above and beyond. You know, I just recently did a camp, um, uh, a campaign with least of all uh, recordings in New York city. And oh, done some cool stuff, man. Like this is really cool. I'm you're going to make things happen. I can tell. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And so I did a campaign with them, and then I flew out to New York, and I I basically did one take vinyl recordings where the audio recording oh, cool. straight onto a record and then mailed to somebody, so they get this really personalized recording. Wow. And it was it was the super fans of mine that that were the first people to buy a copy, and I. Those are the relationships that I foster. Those are the people that I end up sending unlisted, unreleased tracks to and say, what do you think about this? Like I'm trying to build those relationships um, because they're paying dividends. They're showing up to my shows consistently. They're buying new content. And those, those are the people that I should focus on because if, the more that group of people grows, um, the more healthy the music is going to become. Yeah, well, well said. Um, very well said. Well, um, just uh, so much, uh, so many levels of awesomeness here. Um, well, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, before we kind of conclude the show here, let's remind listeners where they can go to find out more about you. Yeah, go to jamesleebaker.com. You can stream all my music there, or if you're on Spotify, Apple Music, pretty much anywhere where you stream your music, uh, you can look for me there. You can even go on a, a Google Home or Alexa and say, you know, uh, play James Lee Baker, and I'll come up. So that's cool. I'll tell you. I, I'm going to practice that, my son, because he loves Alexa. So we're going to practice that in his house today. So uh, <laughs> we'll have fun with that. Uh, well, I want to just thank you so much for for being here. It's been super fun to co-create with you, you know, today in this space. And uh, again, I want to congratulate you for you know all your success and 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 that to come, as well as you know saying yes to your passion, your know, talents and skills for for music, uh, you know, send songwriting, giving fans a place to go they can call home in your songs. So uh, thank you so much again. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. It was, it was a great uh, experience. Oh, great to hear that. Of course. Well, I want to of course thank the listeners as well. And until next time, be bold, stay true and unveil your creative superpowers. Cool. Nicely done. That was fun, man. I, I'm, I'm intrigued by you. I, I have to admit, I'm intrigued by you. That's a, that's a cool thing. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today. I get up and I show.